This video is going to cover chemical industries, which is also known as the fertilizer industry. Um, there are there are different names for this section. This is generally a self-study section, and it appears in your exam paper two. So your chemistry exam, it's generally the last question. It's roughly about 10 marks. So we start off with the reactions that are used to form important compounds needed in the fertilizer industry. So the first process is our Haber process, which is used to form ammonia, NH3. Over here is the equation of the Haber process. It is N2 plus 3H2 to form 2NH3. Delta H is less than zero, which means that this reaction is exothermic. These double arrows mean that the reaction is a reversible reaction. A few characteristics of this reaction. Its temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. The pressure is 300 atmospheres. The catalyst is iron or iron oxide. We see from the delta H less than zero that our forward reaction is exothermic, which means that our forward reaction will be favored by cooling. However, it is important to remember that if the cooling or the low temperature is too low, it will be the reaction rate will be too slow for the reaction to occur. So even though it's favored by cooling, it's only to a certain extent. We are also can work out that we have three volumes of reactants to every two volumes of products. So we get that from our balancing numbers. We have a one and a three to make our four for our reactants and our two for our products. This shows us that we have a higher volume of reactants than we do to products, which means an increase in pressure will favor the forward reaction because when we increase pressure, volume decreases. So the reaction, the forward reaction would be pushed into forming two volumes of product. We then move on to our second process, which is the Oswald process. This is the formation of HNO3. There are three different types of equations that fall under this process. And I've written all three of them down here. The first is 4NH3 plus 5O2 to form 4NO plus 6H2O. Delta H is less than zero. The second would be taking this NO and using it in a new reaction in 2NO plus O2 to form 2NO2. Once again, these are all reversible reactions. And like how we took this NO to, in our, to use in our second reaction, we take our NO2 and use it in our third reaction. 3NO2 plus H2O to form 2 HNO3 plus NO. We can see that we have our HNO3, our nitric acid, which we wanted to form. The rest of the NO, the leftover, would be used again and recycled in reaction two over here. Some characteristics of this process. The temperature ranges between 800 degrees and 1000 degrees Celsius. It uses a catalyst of platinum. You can see that this temperature is much higher than the temperature of the Haber process. Then we can see that the first equation of the Oswald process is called catalytic oxidation of ammonia. Our catalyst is added in this reaction. That's why it's the catalytic. And then oxidation, because we're adding oxid lots of oxygen of ammonia, we're adding it to ammonia. And like I've mentioned, 
delta H is less than zero, so it is an exothermic reaction. We then move on to our third process, which is the contact process. And this is used to form H2SO4, which is also known as sulfuric acid. This process has four different equations, which I've written down here. The first being S plus O2 to form SO2. Our second is taking this SO2 so we have 2SO2 plus O2 to form 2SO3. Note that this is the only reversible reaction. Delta H is less than zero. Then we take our SO3 and use it in our third reaction. SO3 plus H2SO4 to form H2S2O7, which is oleum. Note that this H2SO4 is only a 98% purity. We are wanting to form 100% pure H2SO4. So we use 98% pure sulfuric acid in order to form this. We then take our oleum and use it in our fourth reaction. So we have H2S2O7 plus H2O to form 2H2SO4. Some characteristics of this process, we have a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius. The pressure is between five and seven atmospheres, and we use a catalyst of V2O5, which is vanadium oxide. We then move on to our actual fertilizers. And Basically, what we've done is we've explained the processes used in order to gain the special compounds needed to form the fertilizers, which are our NH3, our HNO3, and our H2SO4. These are inorganic fertilizers. There are three different types, and therefore three different types of equations of how they are formed. So our first is to form ammonium nitrate. So we have ammonia, NH3, plus nitric acid, HNO3, to form NH4NO3. Our second is to form ammonium sulfate, which is, the equation is 2NH3 plus H2SO4 to form NH4 bracket 2 SO4 ammonium sulfate. And our last fertilizer is ammonium phosphate. Its reaction is 3 NH3 plus H3PO4 to form NH4 bracket 3 PO4. It's easy to remember them in this specific order because then we'll remember that we increase in our balancing numbers. So we start with one, move to two, move to three. And that's the same numbers for our hydrogens over here. So one hydrogen, two hydrogens, and three hydrogen. And then the same for our ammonia, one ammonia, two ammonia, three ammonia. That's just a little side note which will help you to remember the reactions a bit easier. Okay, now we move on to what are the advantages of these inorganic fertilizers. So the first being it is they are very soluble so they dissolve well into the soil and can be absorbed easily by the plants. The second is you can measure out the exact quantity of each fertilizer and know its specific nutri nutrient content and dissolve it into irrigation water and it can be used to water the plants. And the last advantage is that all of these fertilizers contain a very high nitrogen content, which we'll later learn is very good for strengthening the leaves of plants. You can see because of the ammonia, it has a lot a high nitrogen content. Okay. 
There are also some disadvantages of inorganic compounds, of these inorganic fertilizers. The first being that it leads to pollution. And the second that it's very expensive because there are many processes that are needed to form these fertilizers. Then, because we've done advantages and disadvantages of inorganic, we must compare them to our organic fertilizers. So, the biggest advantage and probably the only advantage of organic fertilizers is that it's eco-friendly. But this is a very big advantage and that is why many people use organic fertilizers. However, there are quite a few disadvantages of organic fertilizers. First being, you don't know the exact nutrient content in your fertilizer. Second being, it's very labor intensive. And third, it doesn't dissolve well into the soil and isn't absorbed as well by the plants. Okay. Then something which comes up a lot in the section is eutrophication. This is basically the overabundance of nutrients which leads to excessive plant growth, especially algae. You'll generally find this on large masses of water where they've experienced a lot of nutrients and this leads to the algae growing excessively and actually starts to cover the water. And this leads to some plants under the water and animals under the water to die. You can find your exact eutrophication definition in your guidelines. Um, this is just a more explanation definition. Then, when you are doing these questions, a very common question that comes up is calculating the ratio of nutrient contents. So, it's important to remember that the ratio is always given in this format, NPK. So it's always nitrogen to phosphorus to potassium. So if they give you, they tell you that you have a bag of fertilizer with the ratio one is to two is to three. They're basically saying that there's, for every one nitrogen, there is two phosphorus and three potassium. That's just an example. And then, this is a little diagram which helps you remember what each nutrient is important for and is needed for. So it starts off with K at the top. Potassium is used for the flowering and of your plants. So it's, it's needed to strengthen the flowers and to form fruit and flowers. Then we move to our N. Nitrogen is used for strengthening the leaves and the stems. And then phosphorus is used to strengthen the grass. These types of ratio questions are all about practice and remembering that the ratio is in the form N to P to K. This is basically the majority of the work summed up. They often we use very similar types of questions in this section. So it would be very important to go and practice a whole bunch of past papers on the section to, be, to start feeling comfortable with how they ask these types of questions.